Sometimes you come across a watch that really speaks to you. It has everything you could ever want in a watch and more. Sometimes it hits all the right notes in terms of design, specs and price, all at once. This is not one of those times, but I do really like the watch. I just happened to start an impromptu collection of these watches because they aren't so easy to come by, unless you know how to look in the right places. Welcome to Addicted to Watches. Today, we're looking at not just one, but two watches. And they're not even new watches to the channel. Well, technically they are, but they're just different colours of a watch we've already looked at. When I was still living in Japan, I came across a black dialed Orient chicane and jumped on it. That wasn't my first chicane though, and it wasn't my last either. If you want to see a proper review of the watch, I suggest you go back and check that video out. This video will look at the dials more closely, but not the watches so much as a whole. A couple of years before I bought that black one anyway, I had been browsing the web and stumbled on a picture of a blue orient watch that had a very explorer-like dial layout. There was something about that shade of blue that really drew me in. So I looked and looked, and eventually I found one for sale in new old stock condition on an obscure little Japanese website. Luckily, I was going on a trip there shortly after, so I was able to buy it. This is that very watch, and in my research to find it, I also found a niche group of people that knew about this watch and had one in their collection. Because of the exhaustive hunt I went on the first time, when I happened to stumble upon them later, I snapped them up. And that brings us to this red one. Sure, the condition is not the best, but that red dial is something to behold. Red dials are not all that common generally speaking, and they can very easily become too much. Not this one though. I think it got it just right in terms of the vibrancy and shade of red used. Looking at the two watches, they seem pretty much the same, but with different dials, right? Well, yes and no. There are a few differences you might not notice, other than the condition and scratches. Let's have a look at what changed between this red Gen 1 and blue Gen 2 Orient Chicane. The most important change, in my opinion, that they made was changing from a mineral crystal on the Gen 1 to a sapphire on Gen 2. If this had a sapphire crystal, maybe it wouldn't have gotten all of these scratches, hey? The upgrade to sapphire just gives me peace of mind that I'm less likely to damage the crystal in my everyday use of the watch. Neither has any anti-reflective coating, however, so maybe if they ever come back and make a Gen 3, they can add that. Another important change is the upgrading of the bracelet from rolled links to solid ones. When I was researching the chicane, I saw many people complaining about the bracelet and replacing it straight away. Upon getting my blue gen 2, I couldn't really understand why. Sure, it's not the most amazing bracelet you've ever seen, and the clasp is just a pressed one, but it's not on Seiko 5 level. When I got this gen 1 though, I understood. It is light, jangly, and not reassuring at all on wrist. It actually does feel just like a Seiko 5 bracelet, and if I was wearing it regularly long term, I'd definitely look at replacing it with a good quality strap. The overall design of the links did not change between generations though, and I'm happy about that. Those polished little sections help it to pop a little. One final difference between the Gen 1 and Gen 2 is not particularly important, but at least it was something they fixed on the update. Turning both watches over, we can see the display case backs on each. The point of a display case back is to give you a peek at the movement working away inside, right? So why would Orient darken the glass on the Gen 1 to make it harder to see inside? I can't really understand that choice, but at least they fixed it on the Gen 2. Honestly, I'm not that worried about display case backs, unless the movement has a high level of finishing and decoration, but that could be because I'm used to mechanical movements now. For people new to the hobby, and myself when I was, it's a fascinating look at what makes watches work. Now, with the differences aside, let's just briefly revisit the size, design and finishing of the watch. Case diameter is very reasonable at 39mm, which I think is the perfect size for a watch like this. The thickness is very good at 10mm, and the lug-to-lug -lug continues the compact theme at just under 46mm. 
These are combined with a 20mm lug width to fit a wide range of straps. All these dimensions together mean that the watch suits both larger and smaller wrists. For my average sized wrist, as we'll see a bit later, it fits perfectly. Looking at the case, we have a fairly simple one. But simple isn't necessarily bad. After all, this watch is pitching itself as an everyday watch, so you want something a bit more understated. The top of the lugs is brushed, and the side of the case is polished. This is a pretty common combination, which I'm fine with. The shape of the case is quite curved, and the lugs themselves are fairly short and narrow, which contributes to that short lug-to-lug -lug I mentioned earlier. When on the bracelet, it's not really noticeable, but looking at the case, you can see it. The crown is quite simple too. Polished, unsigned, and slightly undersized. It also doesn't screw down to add anything more than 50 meters of water resistance. Finally, back on the front, we have a slim, polished bezel surrounding the dial. And what a dial it is, or dials in this case. Starting with the Gen 1, we are presented with a red Fume dial that in some lights looks just like a red sunburst. But as you get closer, you realize that it is actually finely textured and intricate. Like the color, this texture becomes less visible as it moves to the edge of the dial. Around that dark edge is a printed minute track too. Just inside the minute track, we have the hour markers, we can see the 12, 6, and 9 numerals in a font that is very square, but not quite exactly the same as some other famous watches. The other hours are fairly simple, polished, rectangular, beveled battens. These are all filled with loom, and you'd be forgiven for thinking they will glow brightly when the lights go out. Unfortunately, this is still a budget watch, and Orient definitely found a cost saving here. At 3, we have an applied frame around a date complication. This uses a white date wheel, which, if you've watched my other videos, you'll probably know I'm totally fine with. The white date balances this dial quite well, as the numeral at 9 is quite large and square shaped. Hands are pretty straightforward too. Dauphin hands with equally disappointing loom as the hour markers, and the second hand is a simple needle hand. Looking now at the Gen 2, the dial layout and hands are exactly the same. The only difference is the colour and texture of the dial. It's a darker navy blue, which reminds me of the one used a lot by IWC. It's clearly a sunburst pattern, and quite a strong one at that. Depending on the lighting, it can go from light blue to basically black. Occasionally, when the lighting is soft, it can also look more like a gradient of blue rather than sunburst. This particular shade of blue seems to be harder to find on watches. Usually, you see a much brighter blue, more saturated than this, and I think that makes this one stand out even more as a result. Now, let's get the two watches on wrist and see how they look. As I mentioned, I think they are the perfect size for my wrist, and they are very comfortable. They are big enough to not look small, and small enough to not seem big. The lugs don't hang at all over the sides of my wrist, and, as I turn my wrist, you can really see the dials in action as they play with the light. On alternate straps, these watches look just as good, especially on something like brown leather. So, we're now at a point where I've had a black, blue, and red orient chicane. I told you that I picked these up when I stumbled across them because I know they are not so common anymore. Well, I only told you part of the story. I also came across one other orient chicane, a white one. The twist is that this one is in brand new, unworn condition, with all of the stickers and wrapping still on the watch. Seeing the white dial like this, I really do like it. Picking a favourite colour of all the ones I've had is tough. I think all of the colours are really well done, and would happily wear any of them if they were all I had. At this point, there is only one colour variation I haven't had, which is a blue Gen 1 that had a similar fume effect to my red one here. So, don't be too surprised if you see a video about that at some point in the future when I find one. What do you think about these watches? Do you have one of these Orient Chicane watches? Am I being greedy by hoarding all of these for myself? Which colour is your favourite? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.